Although, I ordered this 3 16 bar, but that's never going to fit. So, I got this quarter inch stainless steel bar. That looks like it, it'll fit better inside that silicone hose. There's my gotcha with the dimmer already installed. Thank you, Sam Bouchard and Lance Hedrick. So, I have the gotcha with the dimmer. All I need is everything else because I want to make good cortados or great cortados. There's the back of the dimmer switch inside the machine. There's where I connected it. I cut the gray wire that comes up from the pump, connected the two black wires to it. Underneath the switches are those indicator lights. They're in the way. That's where I want to put the gauge, the manometer or pressure gauge down there. Damien says it won't fit, but I'm going to make it fit, or I'm going to try anyway. That's where I want to put it, right down there. Inside this machine is a mess. There's a lot to deal with, a lot of wires. I watched a lot of videos and listened to a lot of people. There's where my lines run. I just want to make good cortados. Anyway, let's work on that fitting. So, they didn't have exactly what I wanted, so I made it in three parts. I had a quarter inch national pipe thread to quarter inch barb that screws into a T-fitting with quarter inch that connects to the gauge from cafe parts and I need some flat washers. The new barb, the quarter inch barb, actually measures five millimeters so that'll fit inside the five millimeters of that silicone pump hose pretty good. But it's a pretty big fitting to get inside that machine. Hopefully it'll work out. So I cut a flat washer and put it inside that brass fitting from the gauge but it didn't work out uh, I cut it a little small. I didn't like the way that it didn't make enough connection on the top left edge there um, to seal the connection to that um, pressure gauge. So you can see right there on the top left there, it's just uh, not enough bite. So we'll make another one, but I don't like the 3 8 bumps on my flat washer, so we'll shave that off and we'll just put the fitting on top of it and just cut off the edges uh, but not too small this time and hopefully it'll fit better I'm sure it will I'm sure everything will work out so that looks like it does fit better and we'll see how it tightens a little bit later Let's talk about how we thread these pieces together. When you use Teflon tape, you don't need a whole lot of it. You just use, just wrap the threads once, overlap slightly, and that's more than enough. And you don't want to get any of that Teflon in the path of the water. So you wrap it around the thread gently in the direction that you would thread something on there, and you just overlap it um, slightly, just enough for one wrap plus whatever overlap you need, just, you know, a quarter inch or so. And then you screw it together as tight as you can, and it should be fine. At least it worked out for me. So, what's next? Let's put uh, this washer back in here. And that brass fitting on the end of that quarter inch fitting and make sure it makes a good connection and tighten it down and just look at the seal. Yeah, it looks like it has a good bite on there. So that, um, I feel a little bit better like that'll make a good connection. And now I have the pressure gauge worked out. All I have to do is cut some holes and put everything back together. And I have to clamp onto that hose. So good thing I could find a pack of 20. Uh, for that red hose, I got to get small enough to clamp it and big enough to get around it. This one looks like it'll go small enough to clamp on that red hose and it looks like it opens up big enough to go around it so that looks like it'll work out. So I think I'll go ahead and that's where I tapped into my uh, dimmer switch from that gray wire coming out of the pump. Lots of wires. That's the power supply in the back. 120 volts and this is the rest of the machine and 
looking down in there, I got quite a mess. I have the Gaja logo plate. That's the back of the plate um, from the front logo. And it looks like it can just pull right off. So I decided to pry it off on the front very carefully, trying to notice where the three little prongs were and prying right at that location. And it looked like I could pull the logo straight off and if I did, that plate would fall down inside there. And it did. Um, but yeah, it looks like I can just move that over by drilling a couple of new holes. Those three perfect holes, just use the one on the left and make two other holes perfectly to the left of that. And then I can slide it over. And this piece, I have no idea what that is, but that appears a couple of times. There's that back plate to that Gaja logo. I'm going to take this out and look at it for a couple of days and think about what I'm going to do next. And I'll put it on my faux marble placemats and turn it around and see what it looks like and just plant it on top of the machine for a couple of days and think more about it. Yeah, I think I can just use this other hole and then make some other holes where this uh, record and play buttons are. Um, I don't know why they have record and play buttons there, but uh, it works. All right, so back inside this machine, we have a mess, lots of wires. So I have to modify the PID as per Damien's instructions. I'm sure I can unsolder that SSR that's inside of it. Um, yeah, I'm sure I can do that. It was a little hard. It was pretty, pretty damn hard. Um, not, not, not a thing for beginners. But um, I did it, and now all I have to do is put in the pressure gauge and the PID, and I'll have everything. Right? Looks that way. All right. So there's some 22-gauge galvanized steel wire that I used to make the connections, as Damien suggested. And uh, that worked out for me, and that's what my local hardware store had. Now it's time to label the wires and disconnect everything and pull out everything. And just taking some pictures of the wires to make sure that you know where they all go back. I labeled my A series switches and my B series switches and my C series switches, which was C was steam. And you just keep taking it all apart. You get down into the boiler, you got two hoses left there. The one is on the solenoid. Those front switches seem like they come out okay. I saw somebody taking those out, so I'm pretty sure I can do that. And what's connected to that sel solenoid? A gray wire and an orange wire, a green wire below that. Just make sure you know that when you go to put it back together. And the only, only thing left is that red hose. Oh, I cut it. Well, there's no turning back now. Now whatever I planned out has bet, has got to work out, or I don't have any espresso tomorrow. So we'll uh, pull out the boiler. And since the boiler is out, it'll be a good time to connect the T-fitting to it. And I probably could have gone a little shorter there, but it all works out. Um, it ended up being pretty close to the lid, pretty tall. So you go to the garage, you tape things up, you mark some holes, you drill everything. Um, let's put some tape on the inside with the sticky, say, sticky side facing the drill site. So it'll collect all of those bits that will fall from the drilling. And all we have to do is mark some holes where we need them to put in the nameplate and hopefully they line up perfectly and you can use that backing plate for a little template to show you where to put those holes. Actually, that would have been smart if I did that. They didn't line up perfectly. Um, as you can see, it's raised up a little bit here, but if I need to enforce that a little bit later, I'll just tap it in with a plastic mallet or something. So you drill your holes and what do you have? Well, those aren't perfect and that hole for the gauge is too small. So what do you do? You tape it again. You mark some more outer lines and you grind it until it fits and then you get it to fit. And now all you have to do is put everything back together. Um, and hopefully with no leaks. And that's where it's gonna fit in down there. Um, I'm gonna make it fit in, it doesn't really fit in. Just remember you got the red and blue wires where they go for the thermocouple. This plastic plate won't fit behind the gauge so you just cut it 
um, easy enough to do. And put your indicator lights back in. Put your gauge back on, use your little rubber mallet with a towel, tap it in, and those are the indicator lights underneath the switches. Everything seems to be snapping back together. Un unfortunately, when I put the boiler back in, it, it did nudge out the uh, gauge a little bit because it, it doesn't really fit. Damien was right. But it all worked out. And I have what I needed, I have what I wanted, and I'm making even better katados because now I do it at a temperature that is set and steady. If you have any questions about how all of this worked or what else I can tell you, please feel free to make a comment, ask me anything, I'll tell you everything um, from what I know anyway. But it was a good deal. There's the PID on the top. I haven't decided how to mount it yet. I like the slim black cage. There's the T-fitting inside. It's a little crowded now. I got my relays in there and I connected those things in the back, um, the uh, thermostat switches, and then I ran all those wires throughout the back grid uh, for now until I decide what other hole to drill um, and what flexible conduit to use. And just a, I want to do a minimalist install, just like I hit the dimmer switch in front of that steam. I just want good cortado. If you notice, I had that um, eubonic uh, grinder that uh, Lance had recommended. This is my puck. It comes out pretty dry, uh, good enough for me. When I bang it out, it comes out in one bang, and then uh, it leaves a little bit behind, but not too much. It's uh, livable. I just want good cortados. There's a couple of bubbles in there, but it, they're definitely coming out better. It's settled a little bit. So again... Ask me anything you need to know in the comments. That's the back of the machine. And I love my gadget. Good night, gadget. Ninety one degrees. Works for me. In this next pity uh, picture you'll see the 1.5 millimeters that the gauge pushed out a little bit. Um, but I did get that Gaja logo played in pretty tight. But you can see it pushed out a little bit. But it's functional. It works. And from the front, you can't tell. And uh, looks good.